Hi, it's Corrine for Cut It Home, and today we're making these sweet little Valentine treat boxes. These are like little milk carton boxes, and for both of these I use the gorgeous Graphic 45 paper. For this one here on the right, I used the Children's Hour collection, and this is a beautiful uh, Valentine paper. For this one here on the left, I use the new Cityscapes collection. And you'll find both of these at Cut at Home. On this one here, I also use the Children's Hour Chipboard 1. I used one of the little tags, chipboard tags, and just put a little clothespin on the top. I added a little die cut heart that I added Versamark ink to, and then went ahead and embossed it with this liquid platinum from Ranger. And this, in my opinion, is just a little bit more masculine, a little less frilly. And then this one here, um, it, as you can see, it has a scallop top, a die cut window. For the inside window, I use the clear cardstock. This is by Heartfelt Creations, and it comes in both 8.5 by 11 and also 12 by 12. Again, you'll find that cut at home as well. And I added the scallop outside to it just to give it a frame. I added three of the frames. I do have a quick start to finish that I'll play in a moment here on this video. I also added a couple charms and some satin ribbon. And again, this is a silhouette cut, but I went ahead and figured out the measurements. That way, if you don't own a silhouette cut, you can make one by hand if you'd like, like I did here. And also for this, on the top, you can die cut a border punch with this. I wanted to leave it straight across, but you can also add a border punch. So let me just go over the measurements here, what we'll be doing. Here it is broken down for you. I will have this also listed on Cut at Home's blog, and I will break down the measurements so it's very easy for you to follow if you'd like. But basically, we're going to make one of these by hand today. You need a 10 and a half by 7 and 3 quarter inch paper, and you want to score it on the 10 and a half inch side at 2 and a half, 5 inches, 7 and a half, and 10 inches. Then we're going to turn it 90 degrees, score it at 2 and 3 eighths, and 6 inches. Okay, then we're going to be cutting off these two tabs here because we will not need this. This will leave us with a tab in the middle, and that's what's going to adhere our book together or excuse me, our box together. And on the second and fourth panel, we want to cut off a half inch on the top and a half inch off the bottom. Then we're going to miter out the corners where the interset intersections meet on both the top and the bottom. Once we do that, this is what, what it will look like. Okay, and this will be our box. So let's go ahead and make one quickly. Here I have a 10 and a half by 7 and 3 quarter inch paper. I'm using cardstock. I'm going to score it. So on the 10 and a half inch side, we're scoring it at 2 and a half. And I'm using, this is 110 pound cardstock, so it's very thick. So I'm going over it a few times. So again, 2 and a half, 5 inches. seven and a half inches and ten inches. We're turning it 90 degrees and on the seven and three quarter inch side we want to score it at two and three eighths inch and at six. So the first thing we want to do is where that one half inch score line is, we want to take off the top and the bottom. You want to cut a little bit to the left of your score mark, just slightly. Go up to that score mark, and then I'm going to miter it in or, or cut it in just slightly. Okay, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. There is what we cut off. Okay, so now 
on all of our score marks we want to cut this is on the ten and a half inch side we want to cut up to that score line and not go over and we want to cut out a slight triangle there this will help when we fold our box again I'm going up to the score mark not over it and this is what we will have we're going to do that on both sides Flip it around, do the same thing on the other side. Here's what it ends up looking like. The next thing we want to do is on the second panels and the fourth panels we want to cut off a half inch of the top and the bottom. You can eyeball this if you want. I'm going to use my paper trimmer. And you want to do the exact thing on the side. Then flip it all the way around and do the same panels. So if you cut this panel, you want to cut this one. Same with the top and the bottom. So again, just putting it to my half inch score line. And cutting those off. So we cut off a half inch. Okay, and fold on all your score marks. Give it a good crease with a bone folder. Okay, and if you fold your box together, you'll see how it's coming together now. This little tab will glue to the inside of your box and hold it together. If you want to add a die cut window, go ahead and fold your box, decide where your window is going to be. You're going to want it the opposite of the back side. So go ahead and just mark it with a, a little pencil and run it through your die cutting machine, however you want to cut it out. Or you could just add, you don't have to add a window. But I did add a window to this one, and like I said, I used the clear cardstock for that. That is not necessary, you don't have to do that. Also, as you know, you have two longer tabs and two shorter tabs. If you wanna go ahead and add a decorative border punch to these top two, you would wanna go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to add my double-sided adhesive. You wanna use a strong adhesive. I'm using Angel Craft Tape in the one quarter inch. Go ahead and add your adhesive to your tab. And you simply can fold your box in half, leaving this part over, fold your box in half and it'll match up perfectly and you can burnish it down. And now you have your box. So we're going to fold in the two sides, the smaller sides first, and then the longer sides. I'm going to use some wet adhesive, just quickly glue this down. And I'm going to press the inside to make sure I have um, it adhered done well. I'll use my bone folder as well just to make sure it's adhered done well. And then for the top, go ahead and fold your two shorter sides in and your top part together. Again, if you wanted a decorative punch, and you can hold it together with either a little paper clip, a clothespin like I have here, whatever you would like. And again, you can decorate your box as well. 
So I hope you found this helpful. All the instructions will be written down on Cut at Home's blog along with detailed photos. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the start to finish on this one.